Four Star General, former director of the CIA and the NSA, General Michael Hayden. General, thank you so much for being here. Now, now, uh, General, let's get straight to the heat of the meat here. On Saturday morning, at 6.35 in the morning, the president tweeted that Barack Obama wiretapped him in Trump Tower. Right. Is that possible? No. <laughs> no. Okay. No, no. In what... How, how is that not possible? The United States government has the power to wiretap. It does. And there are all these Russian rumors uh, sure. about the Trump campaign. Sure. Why wouldn't the president do this? Because in the 1970s, we took the authority to direct that action out of the hands of the president, and we put it in the hands of a federal court system. So the only part of the U.S. government, which has the authority, the only part of the U.S. government that can grant the authority to do that, is, is a federal judge. And if I were to want to do that as director of NSA, I'd have to go to the judge, mm -hmm. and I'd have to prove to a level of, of probable cause mm -hmm. that the intended target of the surveillance was either the agent of a foreign power or was involved in some sort of criminal activity. So the president said that it happened, yeah. that he's found out that it happened, and that it's terrible, and that Obama's a bad or a sick guy. Yeah. And he's called for an investigation um, can the president just find out for himself that Absolutely. this happened? He's... That's what I wondered what happened on Saturday morning. <laughs> he, he, seemed, he seemed to have forgotten that he was the president of the United States. <laughs> and... <laughs> well, every morning I hope that it's just some terrible dream. But there... There are only two tracks to do this. Okay. One for foreign intelligence purposes. That's run by the intel guys, Jim Clapper, who's been on the news lately. And he has said it didn't happen. Right. And then the other guy over here who does it for counterintelligence or law enforcement purposes is Jim Comey. And the rumor is that he's saying it, he didn't, happen. it didn't happen. And he's asked the Justice Department right. to basically put out a statement saying it That's didn't right. happen. So what the president could have done was kind of hit the switch there on the phone and say, get me Comey. Get me the acting director of national intelligence. Have him down here for lunch. I got a question. And then he could simply ask them and get a response. But he didn't choose to do that. He decided to go ahead and tweet out the accusation as if it were fact. Now, should, in your opinion, should the president be tweeting this? <laughs> no. <laughs> if it were true... <laughs> I mean, if it were true... <clears throat> If it were true that the, the president, the previous president, Obama, had used, through some governmental mechanism, uh, a plumber squad, even, something just criminal... And Which is why we took the power away from the president in the 1970s. Because Nixon did this right. stuff, okay. If, if, if this had happened, and it, even if it was because that Trump was being suspected of uh, cooperating with the Russians or somewhere, colluding... Sure. Would he have... Uh, somehow breached national security? Would he, would he have, de would he have uh, released classified information by doing that by, tweet? By the, by the tweet? Yeah. Yeah, this is a really weird circumstance. The, um, <laughs> the classification god in the American political system is the president. All right? So when the president decides to tweet something and make it public, it is in that action no longer classified. Remember back in the Nixon era when he said, when the president does it, it's not illegal? Yeah. This is one instance where that's right. Wait, so the minute he actually says it, any president, but any Trump, president. in this case, Trump tweeting, which is unprecedented. He tweets it. He it's is, unclassified. He has made it, un he has declassified it from the system. Well, then why doesn't he declassify some fun stuff? <laughs> like... <laughs> Area 51, or what happened to that's, Tupac? Okay, or... first of all, Area 51, yeah. that's government property. That's all we're saying. Okay. Can you do, you, do you know, do you know things that you can't tell me that I'd be fascinated to hear? Yes. <laughs> Dumb question. Dumb question. Can you give us even a hint? Can you keep a secret? Turn off the cameras. <laughs> I can't keep a secret. Me too. I stepped into that. I stepped into that. Okay, let's talk about this. The Russians did something, and we have recently found out that the American government is doing something, if WikiLeaks is to be believed. The latest dump from WikiLeaks says that the CIA is looking at me and listening to me through my TV. I'm glad it's funny to you. Because uh, it's kind of funny to me, too, but for different reasons. <clears throat> Weeping Angel is the name of the program where they're looking through my TV. 
is the CIA listening to me through my microwave oven and through my TV and through my cell phone? Are they doing that, sir? No. If they were, <laughs> would you say yes? Yes. <laughs> is that a true answer? <laughs> yes. Look, this... I don't believe you. <laughs> I get that a lot. Yeah, yeah, okay. okay. Look. You can't tell me if it's true, right? No, I, I can tell you that these tools would not be used against an American. We just... Why we just, not? Why we, wouldn't they be used against an American? Americans are the ones who buy the Samsung TVs. Um, I've got... I've got four Samsung TVs. Yeah, yeah I've got them. Actually, this afternoon, this being an item of interest, I did some quick research. It's a non-scientific sample. There are some bad people in the world who have Samsung TVs, too. Right. And... And so NSA develops tools, CIA develops tools that we can use. We just went through the drill about FISA and how you get a warrant and you got to go to a judge. That protects you and me, all U.S. citizens, all the time. But there are people out there that you want us to spy on. You want us to have the ability to actually turn on that listening device inside the TV to learn that person's intentions. This is a wonderful capability. You give, you give the intelligence community $53 billion a year. Mm -hmm. You got to get something for your money. I've got a good accountant. I don't actually give that much. <laughs> well, let me ask you this. So I shouldn't be worried about that kind of stuff. I, you know, look, we're all Americans. We're all distrustful of government. It's in our DNA, even the former director of this and that. Let me ask you this. Do you on your computer, put a piece of tape <laughs> over the camera. No, I do not. You do not? I do not. I can't wait for the tapes to come out. <laughs> um, well, um, Director, thank you so much for being here. Oh, happy to be here. I thank could you. talk to you all night long because there's this metaphor about a grandmother dying <laughs> that I'm not going to go into. Thank you so much. Thank you. The director has a book called Playing to the Edge, available now in paperback. Go get it. General Michael Hayden,